Hey everyone, it is Steve from Nerds Delta, and I'm going to be talking to you today about a game that's kind of new to me, but that I'm loving so far, and that is Fantasy Flight's X-Wing. Obviously, this is a game that's been out for a little while. A lot more of you are going to be more versed in it than I am, but I am currently just starting out with a scum and villainy little armada. I have two of the Star Vipers. I have a Jump Master. I have an IG-2000. And a Shadow Caster, which, out of all the ships that I own, is probably my favorite, both in looks and in what it does on the board. Not really sure what else I should get going to get this going, but honestly, I'm just really into the way that a lot of these ships look. I plan on repainting most of the ones that I already own to kind of fit with a theme. <clears throat> I haven't decided what that is yet. I'm already kind of Jones in to pick up some of the Imperial sets. I think that these are really beautiful models. I uh, just got done playing the Star Wars Battlefront beta and flying in those ships made me want nothing more than to play X-Wing. So it's it's pretty impressive when you're playing a video game and all you can think of is a tabletop uh but honestly the mechanic of using the dial if, if you don't know <clears throat> in star wars x-wing you use a dial to control your movement and you basically without pre-measuring have to kind of guesstimate how far your ship's going to be able to move versus another ship or any kind of a terrain that might be in your way. This can make it seem easy, but the more that you play the game, you kind of see that it is, it's hard not to fly off the board. It's hard not to run into an asteroid until you start getting a little bit better a grasp of your movement and what you're capable of. Some of these ships can do a 360 turn on a dime when other ones, you know, have, have a difficulty turning hard at all. Uh, I love the upgrade cards. <clears throat> At first I hated them. I felt like it was a pay to win kind of strategy and in some aspects it is, but of course they have to make money. And it's, I prefer them making money off of a good game than off of a subpar product that I can't even get behind. And it really is that, a superb product. Um, I think that one of the things that really makes the game so perfect is once again how well they encapsulate these uh these figures they really do make you visually if you have the right backdrop feel like you can imagine this being this epic dog fight above you know naboo or wherever and or if you're into that sort of thing but uh one of one of my favorite games. I have more fun with it. I feel less competitive. Even though, obviously, people are running around with three jump masters. People are out there being competitive in this game. Uh, I haven't really looked into that yet. Maybe at some point, I'll, I'll look into being a little bit more competitive with it. I'll look into being a little bit more, uh, you know, worrying about my win-loss streak. But right now, the game's just fun. I guess the question I have is what to buy next. There are a lot of different ships that I really enjoy. Uh, I will probably be sticking with my scum and villainy. I, I want to see the extent of how they fly and how they fight and all that good stuff before I move on to another army. Uh, unlike 40k or the other games I play where I might be a little bit of a a dabbler where I, I might uh, stick my paintbrush in a lot of different palettes. I want to keep this one very pure, very simplistic, which is why I think buying what I want and then painting them up and not allowing myself to get a secondary army is, is probably the way to go. Now, price point wise is one of the other beautiful things about this game. I can go out and get a model if I buy one ship, it, it costs me about $17, and then my local gaming store has a discount system. So I, I'm paying less than what I would be paying on the internet, but for a 
new list, that's still less than $100. Most of the time, the lists that you're seeing are going to be about 100 points. And that seems to be true here in the States and overseas. If other people want to disagree with that, please do so. Uh, let me know if, if I'm completely off on anything that I'm saying through this. But when you're talking about a game that requires an investment of less than $100 to get a capable, if not competitive, list going, that's pretty impressive. Their starter, I believe, is 40 some odd dollars. Once again, you factor in a discount with that, and uh, you're getting two ships, all of your movement templates, and you're getting all of your tokens that you're going to need for playing a basic game. You're also, I believe I said you're getting two ships, you're getting two X-Wing, or two TIE Fighters and an X-Wing. So if you're interested in starting either an Imperials or a Rebels, you're already off to a, a half a list in some cases. The pilots, I think all really, maybe not reflect their fictional counterparts, but they do a fantastic job of capturing the feel of the universe, I guess. But overall, I, I, I have a hard time saying anything bad about the game. I maybe wish, and this is as an outsider coming in, that maybe once per wave, they could do some kind of card pack sell, selling. Uh, if you don't know, in X-Wing, you have cards that say the stats of who, whichever ship you're flying, as well as the pilot that's flying said ship. Each card has a different allocation of uh, upgrades that it can take. You also, in every time you buy a, a ship, you get cards for the pilots, you get cards for upgrades, maybe not for that ship. You might get a pilot card for another ship, you might get upgrade cards that don't apply to your ships. So, in some respects, you do have to kind of mix and match what you're purchasing if you have anything specific you want to run as a build. So, from my perspective, I would like it a lot if we could get some kind of card pack once per wave, which is their release schedule, that could maybe have all the upgrades. I, I would pay... You know, I'd pay a pretty penny for that. I think a lot of other players would too, but that's a minor complaint. To be honest, the game is great. It's great for new players. It's great for experienced war gamers. It's great for people who love the the series. Uh, growing up playing or playing all the Star Wars games, but also reading comic books, reading the old Timothy Zane books. There are so many things that I see in this that I really enjoy as a fan of the series, and I honestly cannot wait to play more of this game. So, if you were on the fence about this game, or you weren't sure if it was for you, let me say that if you like the idea of playing a board game that is based around the very loose concept of ship-to-ship -ship space combat, and... If you are into the world of Star Wars, you will not be disappointed. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this. My name is, once again, Steve, uh, Z Inquisition, and this has been Nerds Delta with a noob's review of Fantasy Flight's Star Wars X-Wing.